<laughs> Welcome to the new with the visual guy. Right, Chris has ga gathered up some fucking weird headlines here, but we've got Christmas Elf, Eating Challenge, Belly Button, and Bridezilla, which isn't like the show, which is just question me. Well, I've just questioned. Fuck it, roll it. That was a very dramatic breathing. I was scared. Though. <laughs> I was scared. You were like, oh, so you're going to murder somebody? No. Sorry. 23-year-old Paulina from Mexico loved her boyfriend, which, fair enough, if you loved your partner, then, yeah. But she wanted to do very something special. She wanted to give him something special. So, what did she give him? So yeah, she wanted to give him something special. So she decided to go under the knife to get her belly button removed and present it to him as her show of appreciation, her bond. Placenta. Yeah, it's placenta. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um she got her belly button cut off well removed. You can't really cut off your belly button, but she got the how oh, your belly button goes in. She had that like yeah. She gave it to her boyfriend. But when I say a boyfriend it kinda of, like a couple of months later, she well it, they split up. <laughs> so, and then she kinda of, like regretted it was selfish and I've written it down. Selfish and 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 impulsive. That was it. So she yeah, she kind of regretted doing it, which was like, yeah, I don't blame you. Uh, Who would cut your belly button off to give it to somebody else? That's like cutting your arm off and saying, yeah, I love you. No, don't do this. Don't do it. Keep away from the knife. Right, Chris has found the ultimate job for any of you uh, Christmas festive loving characters out there. Christmas elves are wanted to bring, uh, what is it, love, uh, happiness and joy throughout the Christmassy festival period. The job itself will take place from November, finishing in January, not the other way around. So you've, you work it all through the Christmas build up to Christmas and the New Year's shenanigans. This will take place in Finland's most northeastern region. I hope that, God, I did that the right way for the visuals, because obviously never eat shredded wheat. <laughs> never eat shredded wheat. It's in Finland's most northeastern region. The job role will be guiding guests, embracing the festive Christmas spirit, and the best of all, you get to drive the elf bus, whatever that means. Is it, are they small? So it's regular. Okay, I think it's just a bus decorated. So it's not a really small bus. No, I think it's just a bus decorated with... Elves and nothing else. You get to drive the elf bus. Borrow from Chris's list here, which is very unprofessional, but they uh, they ask that, that the people be very open, uh, sorry, outgoing, <laughs> positive, good customer skills, English, uh, and preferably another language. I can speak English and I can say Einstein, Zweit, Sieben, Sex, Sieben, Achnoin, which is t one to ten in German. -er German. -er <laughs> German! A pizzeria over in Ireland are looking for challenges. The challenge is to eat a 32 inch, so I said ounce, a 32 inch pizza with a, a selection of toppings as you please, with all sorts, two flavorish milkshakes. If you complete the challenge, you receive 500 euros. You have to do this challenge in one sitting, there's no time limit or whatever, but preferably you can't take it home and bring it back later on and say, I'll finish the rest. No, you, you've got to really do it in one sitting mm. with, with your milkshakes. Nobody has yet completed the challenge. There's only been a hundred people that's done it, but nobody has uh, completed the mission. Nobody has. Everyone's nap. Nap it. So, yeah, if you think you are ready for this eating challenge if you want to put a bit of weight on I don't know why you would but if you want to put a bit of weight on and you fancy a challenge head over to Dublin in Ireland and head yourself down to uh, Pinhead's Pizza 
Pinhead's Pizza. Pinhead's Pizza. Pinhead's Pizza in Ireland, in Dublin. Get yourself that challenge done. And if you succeed, you get 500 euros. I don't know what that is in English money. I'd say maybe roughly just over 400 and whatever quid. But yeah. Do you accept the challenge? Right, a bride over in a, uh, Australia has become under fire from her friends and family because she has given all of them an A4 size guideline of fucking rules for her wedding. My visuals, I'm actually going to have to read this off here because I don't want to miss a single of these details that Chris has written down. The bride has insisted that all friends and family, right, listen to this, this, this is what you call an official fucking nutcase. Um, <laughs> buy your own food and drink. No plus ones, so no hooking up if you're single and ready to mingle. Uh, no, no one on the list not getting in like she's some big celebrity. Um, <laughs> uh, only allowed to wear bright colours. Um, so I thought they were usually like, t no, not tuxedo, but you know, like suits and shit. Women wear just nice dresses that you got to apparently look like a fucking bag of skittles if you want to come in here. And just a cherry on top of this Australian bride's nutcases of a wedding thingy, uh, for you to come to this wedding, you have to donate some of your hard-earned cash to the uh, honeymoon, which you will not be going on. You'll probably just see pictures and hear about it and shit. Let's... Would you pay for my honeymoon? No. No, so why the fuck should you pay for this bridezilla's honeymoon? Basically, what needs to happen is uh, Chris will hire Deadshot yeah. and um, just wound... We won't fatally kill, no. Mm. Well, he says, hmm. She just needs fucking sorted out. You can't expect people to pay for your honeymoon. Come up like a bag of Skittles. Pay their own food and drink. Is this why you don't want to get married? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why Chris doesn't want to get married, because he's a bit of a bridezilla. <laughs> <laughs> Spots and weather, Chris and Christicles. Your section of the fans could be called Christicles, like your testicles. You could be like, hey, Christicles. Do it with a cross-eyed face. <laughs> Sports and weather time. We're gonna go see Gavin. He's uh, he's gonna referee a game of I think it's a, a Australian football, but uh, I know it's this cricket. And he goes to celebrate, and he gets a bit of a uh, a thingy. And Ball to the face. Uh, and we're gonna go see. This is a little boy, right? By the way, who's our new weather reporter? Arthur. Arthur, he's uh, he's going to check out how stormy it is. I don't know what the fuck the <laughs> finger crack is today. Let's go check out Arthur and Gav. Sports. Yeah. Whatever. Fuck you. The weather. There you go. Uh, Gavin has got an eyeless and uh, Arthur is wet. We'll just, we'll just leave it at that. Is it broken, Chris? Uh, you're going to embark in this lovely journey. I'll get it all ready for you there, Chris. Thank you. Of Chris's happy time. Yes. Hold on to your Christicles. Chris's happy time. Yes, it is now time for my heartwarming story. This. Roll it. And this week is about a seven-year-old boy called Jackson, who is from Iowa. Jackson was sadly diagnosed with brain cancer back in 2006. Treatment is still ongoing. It's a drug experimental treatment, so God knows what the fuck I'm pumping into the poor lad, to be honest. But, like I said, treatment is still ongoing to see what happens for him. But minus all the stuff the poor lad's going through, there is an upside to this because he's a huge, huge fan of Iron Man. He's always wanted to be Iron Man. He's, he's obsessed with Iron Man. And his mum, so his mum decided to make him a bucket list. Everyone has a bucket list. So his mum decided to make him one, just like what you want him to do or who you want him to go where, whatever. So. Top of his list was to meet Iron Man, bless him. And the reason why he wanted to meet Iron Man because he is a bit of a, a bit of a lovely character because they shared something similar. As you know, Tony Stark is going to hate me for this, but whatever that thing was arc called, reactor. That's the one. He had an arc reactor on his chest, and sadly, so did Jackson to help him 
with treatment and whatever else. So he thought he was a bit of a mini Tony Stark, a bit of a mini Iron Man. So that's why he was re really wanted to meet him. So his, his mum sent the message out to social media, basically just to try, just to see what happens. Just get out there, might get a reply back, might not. But you never know unless you really try. But yes, Tony Stark sent Jackson a message I'm not really going to go into details because it was a message specifically to him, so it was like a one-to-one -one message. Um, but yeah, it was, it was nice to, for, for little Jackson to go through what he's going through, to get a message from his hero. He's even going to, even going to arrange to have a meet-up just to, yeah, just to say hi and just to see how the poor lad's doing. So yeah, that was basically the heartwarming of the This poor lad, going what he's going through, still has time. To meet his hero, it's like poor lad. So yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter who your hero is. You, you'll get them. You'll get them. He's not mine, but I am stuck with him. Yay! Yay! But all on that, just want to say, get well, Jackson. We hope you all sort things out, and whatever good old Tony Stark has lined up for you, I'm sure you have a lovely time. Ah, oh, that you've that got my. A little bit there. I like that shit. That's a message from Tony Stark. He said he's going to meet him. Yeah. Yes! Go on, RDJ. Adons! Happy! Ending! Right, now it's time to see what I've been doing in the way, wazy, wazy, crazy. Crazy. That shit does my head. <laughs> you see it sticking down. I had a picture sticking down. Right, it's a crazy moment. I go around the world. As Chris is trying to find out these nice, lovely stories, I just go off my own little world because I have no idea what my conscience really is. Uh, and I just got, I got into, no, I got into a stranger's car and he was like, hey, come, little man, come sit in car. So I was like, okay, you sound great. Uh, no, he was actually from uh, Bournemouth. So uh, because that's how they sound in Bournemouth. Hey, crazy man, come to car. So I come to car. And, um, I got in his car, but then all of a sudden his mate Mitrovic, Mitrovic, I have men, uh, come chase me, just watch the clip. <laughs> so yeah, that happened. Uh, I ended up safely, he took me back home. I felt a bit funny on the inside, that's because I fell asleep for a few hours. Uh, and that's it. And my pants were wet. It was raining, so I assume it was that. But that was this week's news, bitch. You always remember if you've got any uh, sporty or weather antics you want to let us know in the comments below. If you've got any uh, little happy heart woman stories you want this lovely bucket of joy to share with you, or if you want to get wasted and let me come join you. Um, Don't let me join you. <laughs> nine times out of ten, you're letting the deed. What? Indeed. I haven't killed nine people out of ten. Um, <laughs> Smooth, but yes, if you've got a heartwarming story and you'd like me to share it, let me know. I'll happily share your story. And we want some more weather and sports reporters because little Arthur didn't like get hurt. He was just wet, but I'm pretty sure Gal's dead. Um, visuals, keep me in here, keep on. <laughs> See, I did that like, <laughs> it's maybe like a slow mo visual, keep me in here, keep on, keep it on. Happy birthday. We're from East Coast, LA, home dog. <laughs> <laughs> a pizzeria shop. I should have did this before. I should have started again. Yeah. No. <laughs> pizzeria over in Ireland. No, you've got to say it all Irish now. You've got to say pizzeria and over over in Ireland. A pizzeria or an Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> have a challenge for you. The challenge is to heat a five hundred. No, that was wrong. <laughs> Oh, right, uh, the critical section and the, uh, oh, it doesn't play off with my, uh, Dan, Dan, Dan Anus, no, it doesn't work, uh, test the critical, I don't know what I'm going with this now. Time for the sports and weather now, with the Christicals, and, uh, this time we're going to go see, uh, my mate, Gavin, Gavin, uh, that is so weird, <laughs> that was that because, right, okay. My mate Gavin, unrelated to the... I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here. <laughs> <laughs> you all shout that party, then! Um, 
But Chris, it's always we get to the sports and when we start getting to the things where we stand near each other and your crystals come close. <laughs> oh my god, he's so weird. Um, <laughs> right, now it's time to see what I've been doing in the way, wazy, wazy, crazy. Crazy. That shit does my head in. You see it sticking down. I had a picture sticking down. <laughs> crazy bastard. You ever used to watch Arthur? You know, what a wonderful time today. You oh, can learn to work and a crazy bus, crazy bus. I've seen a football head. Uh, that's uh, Hey Arnold. Mm. Um, fuck, man, I keep going on tangents.